All right, you maggots, listen up. Uh, this is for those people that enjoy uh, technical stories with a little bit of twists here and there on the story. Now, I got this job at TRW, and this guy, Jerry, hired me. And when he hired me, he said, you know, you're a little bit older than people were looking to hire. We're talking three years difference. He says, uh, you have more experience and blah, but he says, uh, I'm going to hire you anyway because I, I see some possibilities. So anyway, he hires me. And uh, one of the things he, he would do on a Friday, he'd call me into his office and he'd do something like, uh, uh, tomorrow, I want you to come in here uh, on Saturday and um, I want you to hook up with these two guys and uh, we're, they, we need to run a data line from one of our computers all the way to the opposite end of the warehouse. And you're talking, I want to say it's a quarter of a mile. I know it was over an eighth of a mile. Three big buildings hooked together. We had to go the full length. So he says, uh, we have to run this data line every six months because it goes bad. And I'm thinking to myself, but I kept quiet. I'm like, a data line just goes bad? I want to see this. All right. So uh, he goes, show up tomorrow morning, meet up with these two guys. So I go go there in the morning. Oh, I'm laying, laying in bed at night thinking about the data line going bad. What could go bad? And this is what the connector looked like. It, it was three wires, and this, this mounted at the back of the computer and then on the back of the terminal. And they might have called it a telco line, but it has three. This one's got only got two pins, but it has three pins in it. It's got a, um, a white, a black, and a ground, and it's a serial line. Serial, uh, full duplex. In other words, when you hit the key, it sends the data, and the data can come back. Uh, anyway, it's full duplex. So... Uh, I show up there and I meet up with this guy and I had met him before. And then this other guy was with him was a systems guy. And he was going to verify that the wire worked after we got it put in. So he's standing there sort of watching us. And Bruce is the guy that I'm working with. And uh, he takes me to the back uh, out, in the, out on the floor. And um, he says, we're running from this computer all the way to the back. So I said, all right. So we go up on these staircases we used to call them stairways to heaven there's two different sizes they're steel staircases they're on wheels when you step on them the wheels retract up and these rubber feet come down and they don't move they're very sturdy you can stand at the very top of the staircase it's got a top step with a with a, um, a railing all around it so as you're at the top there you're, you could actually lean on the railing so he's got the two staircases next to each other and he goes up and he takes the ceiling blocks out. I go up in one and that. He goes, now hand me the wire. I'm going, you got to be kidding me. He goes, no. I said, uh, I, I said, I've ran wires before. I said, uh, I usually use a tennis ball and some rope. And he's looking at me. I said, I, I said, All right, we got to go almost an eighth of a mile or whatever. And they, they, this guy, Jerry, said, it's going to take you four hours. And I'm thinking, if I start handing this wire, over to the guy, and it's on a big spool. It's over a thousand feet, and then you got to. Well, anyway, I said, let me let, just let me just show you my vision here. So I go to my bench and I pull out a tennis ball, and I punch two holes through it. And I put a piece of rope through it, and uh, <laughs> I get up in the one ceiling block tile. We took it out. I'm standing up there. I'm talking to him. He's at the next one. I said, go down about six. Uh, ceiling block tiles, open it up, come up in the staircase. So he does. And I throw him the tennis ball with the rope on it. And I said, now, I said, uh, uh, I, I'm tying the I tied on the other end of the uh, rope. The rope had to be at least 30 feet long. I tie the wire. And I say, now start pulling the rope. He pulls the rope. Now he's pulling the wire through. The, the uh, cable that we're running is on a spool. Or it's on a, a unit that feeds it out. And I go, that's how we're going to do it. So the next one now, you got to remember, we got to go, say, an eighth of a mile. So I said, uh, now uh, you, he has the ball, and he has the, the, the wire near him. I said, now I'll go down maybe 12 ceiling block tiles. And uh, anyway, the one I'm in, I close up. I go down about six, then 12. And then uh, I go up, I open the ceiling block tile. And I just, I just come back down. I said, now throw the ball at the, at the opening. 
And I said, if you miss it, try to throw it past the hole and then pull the rope back and it'll drop through. So now 12 of them things, uh, was it 40 feet? Uh, well, anyway, so he throws it and he overshoots it. He pulls the rope back and the tennis ball drops through. And now the opposite end is still tied to the cable. And I pulled through and I said, look, don't scrape the wire. I said, we got to be very gentle with the wire. Uh, because he, he, I was told it goes bad every six months. He says, yeah. He says, they've been paying a company to run the wire every six months. And I'm like, I, I, I've been in electronics a while. I, I, I don't, I, I don't see this. I don't see it going bad or why it goes bad, but I want to know it goes bad. So the distance that I was opening the ceiling block tile was getting further and further. And Bruce was really, you know, running out the full 30 feet of rope. And then we're laughing because he's doing it. So anyway, as we're working, the, the system guy's kind of hovering around us. He's like, this is going pretty good. And uh, he's already, he's, he's getting ready to, he wants to hook the opposite end up to the computer. I said, you can't because it's on a spool. It's spinning. And he just looks at me. And I'm like, okay, keep going. So all of a sudden this guy appears and he's got a coffee cup. And if you ever saw Office Space, now I'm going to forget the guy's name. Oh, the guy in office space is always holding that goddamn coffee cup. Well, this guy was holding the coffee cup, and he starts telling us how to do the job. And we're already on it an hour. He's an hour late if he was really told to come in. So I don't know what the hell to do. You know, I'm running the wire. The system guy says, we're, we're, we're entering the roof here. We're going to there. And that, what, what else is there? And this guy's got the coffee cup, and he's, he's rattling this shit. And I'm saying to myself, this guy's really annoying, right? So we kept doing what I'm doing. And he's like making fun of the fact that we're throwing a tennis ball. But we're, we're going the distance. You know, I think Bruce did like 25 feet or maybe more, the full length of the rope. And he got it to come down through the whole first shot. And that was like, it was, we, we made a game out of it. And we're pulling the, we're pulling the cable through and we're being careful not to, because to, uh, there's, there's metal up in there. It's a drop ceiling. And if you pull it, uh, without relieving the pressure, you could you could slit the wire. So we're rolling, we're going along, and this guy is getting more and more aggressive, telling us what we're doing. So I said, "Hold on." I went down. And I said, "I said, watch this." So I went back to my bench, and I had this giant nut I found out in the parking lot, and it's as big as your fist—a giant nut, a stainless steel. I had it on there uh, on my bench. It's like a paperweight. And I went and I got that, and I took the tennis ball off, and I put the, the, this giant nut on the end of the rope. Now, I had warned the guy several times, the guy that suddenly became the boss. Several times I warned him not to stand below the hole or the opening because he'd get hit in the head with the tennis ball. Now I got a, it had to be a five-pound nut. So Bruce throws the nut, and it goes right through the hole, first shot comes down, goes through the guy's coffee cup, breaks it, shatters the coffee cup, and it goes all over him. So we just kept going. And he, he's, he, now this guy's like standing there ranting, you're going to have to buy me a shirt. And I'm like, fuck you. Who the hell are you? Anyway, we're running the wires, and we got it done. And we cut the wires, you know, on the one end from the spool. We made sure we had enough service uh, loop. I explained to the guys, I don't, you know, I'm the kind of guy that I don't, I don't care if you know something. I'm just going to mention it just in case you don't know it. I said to the guy, uh, leave about 20 foot service just in case, uh, which they did. They decide they want to move a terminal in one of the rooms. They have, they have extra line at that end to move the terminal. So he hooks the terminal. We hook it to the, uh, well, the terminal's on the opposite end. We hook it to the computer and it works. And he's sitting there, he's keying stuff in. And he's testing the computer more than he's, the line works. It's a serial line. But that's his job, and he's he's making sure it runs all the different programs. And then uh, the other guy says, you know, um, if we have more time, uh, Jerry had said, can you run another line? And I said, you know where it has to go? And I said, and system guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we go, and I put the tennis ball back on. We run that wire, and we get it all done. We put all, all the ceiling block tiles are back in. I walk it, making sure they're all in nice and neat. And we're sitting down, taking a break. We got sodas. We're done. It's supposed to take four hours. I, I, I'm telling you, we were done in an hour. And in comes Jerry. 
And he's like, he looks like embarrassed. Like we're goofing off. And I said, uh, and, and I said, uh, I said, we got the wires run. I said, can we go home? And uh, at that moment, the guy with the coffee cup, he starts talking to him like he ran the whole show. And Jerry looks at him and he goes, who are you? And he got, I, nobody told him to come in. He just came in on his own and he started being a boss. And I was, I was bamboozled. I didn't know. I was told, meet this one guy, Bruce. And this other system guy was going to check to make sure it works. And then uh, this thing was costing him thousands of dollars. So Jerry shuts the guy up. He sends him home. It was funny. And then he looks at me and goes, how did you run the wire so fast? So I, I, I show him the tennis ball. I said, well, you open the a ceiling block tile, and then you throw the tennis ball to an open ceiling block tile, and then you pull the wire through, you'd be very careful. And I said, we ran the wires the same way as the other wires that stopped working. I said, it isn't like we went diagonally. I said, I, we ran it the, the correct route. And I said, I want to tell you what's going on. I said, somebody went up there and cut out sections of the wire. And he's just staring at me. I said, data lines don't go bad every six months. And he, he, he's, he's looking at me going, you know, you're right. What, what, what the? I said, somebody's going up there and they're cutting sections of data lines out for scrap, for, for copper. And he's just looking at me going, that's what I said. Whoever, whoever's doing it is coming every six months. Well, it turned out to be the air conditioning guy. Here's the bad part of the air conditioning guy. The air conditioning guy is supposed to come and take the filters out, clean them off and replace them. Any belts that are on the pulleys, on the fans, if they look frayed, he wasn't doing that. He'd show up, he would scrap out copper wire and knock out our data systems. And then we would hire a company to come in and put the wires back. Funny stuff, huh? This is what really goes on. And I walk into this. This is how my whole life is. I walk into something. And the whole time I'm like, why does a data line go bad? How could it down? And I'm like, this is going to be interesting because how does a, a piece of wire go bad. You know, you're sending uh, microvolts through it, or maybe millivolts. I think it's 30 millivolts on a serial line. Uh, at Teltype, I believe it was 30 milli, 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 not milliamps. Yeah, milliamps. Yeah, okay. 30 milliamps on the closed loop uh, Teletype system. So anyway, you know, Jerry's like, you did it's like really so, so I, I not, not only did I run the wire quick, and then um, we got done. Jerry showed up. He kicked the guy out that thought he was the boss. Lambart. Lambart's the name of the guy with the coffee cup on uh, office space. But uh, I figured out what was going on with the data lines. And after that, we never lost the data line because they, they tracked it down. And who, who comes every six months? And it, the, the funny thing is, if the air conditioning guy had showed up there and actually changed the filters and replaced the belts, he wouldn't have got fired. We would have kept having him cut the wire. Well, anyway. It's that's one of the stories where you you know, but picture this, you know, uh, I'm running wires at uh, McGraw Edison. Uh, we had we had union guys, and we moved into this building in West Orange. It was for Voice Writer, and I've been in Florida, and I packed everything up and learned all the job. We moved it back, and I started setting it all up, and the union guys started complaining. Uh, they're supposed to set stuff up that they didn't know, understand what it was. So I would stand there and tell them how to hook stuff up. And then finally, the union guys were so overwhelmed with work, they let me do stuff. So I was running telephone lines, hooking telephones up. You're not supposed to do that in New Jersey. You're not, you're supposed, to, you're not supposed to touch a telephone line. You're not supposed to rerun a telephone line. And it, the same type of roof, uh, same type of ceiling. It's a drop ceiling. And I used to, I used to, probably a weight or something. I didn't use a tennis ball. And I ran wires. I did that. I got practice there. My first job, I ran uh, burglar alarm wires uh, by myself. And then I, I worked with an electrician on this one company I worked for. Uh, they hired the electrician. His helper didn't show up. So the boss says, go help him. And he, he taught me about running wires and what not to do. Anyway, so I, I had that under my belt. And then when Jerry picked me for the job, he, he figured I was a self-starter. And the other guy that was with me, he was a self-starter too. And when I said, let's use a tennis ball, he, he was all ears. He's like, I want to see this. And he, he would laugh every time he would throw that tennis ball and get it. He'd throw it and it would drop through the hole first shot. 
he would just laugh and because he knew how hard it is passing that wire uh, on, uh, uh, above the ceiling as a drop ceiling, how long that would take. And it took no time at all. But I was concerned. I told him, you know, I said, uh, I'm going to get up in there and relieve the pressure every so many feet. And we pull so many feet of wire through after we had the rope tied to it. I said, I don't want to be scratching the wire, you know, because I thought maybe that's how the wires were going bad. No, there was a guy up there. There was a walkway up there. It was a catwalk. And the guy would go up there and just walk along with a pair of cutters and cut out sections of data line and roll it up and take it out to his truck. And the other thing, too, is up there, uh, the couch from the ladies' room disappeared, and it showed up up there. A guy was sitting up there above the ladies' room uh, watching the women undress and stuff. Uh, yeah, I could talk about all this stuff because uh, TRW, that's defunct now. Most of the people involved in it are dead. But there's a lot of nonsense. When you're in the know, and the bosses confide in you. You got to watch. You don't tell your coworkers some of the things they tell you, and they they hate you for it. And uh, that's just the way it was. The the boss when he hired me, he told me he says you're you're a little older. You have more experience than what we we're told to hire. He says I'll hire you. Uh, I can't give you as much money, but I'll get you as much money. I get you as get you up there and pay as fast as I can. And then when I went home and told my mother this when he hired me, my mother was rolling her eyes. She didn't believe any of it, but it did happen. The guy was able to promote, promote me several times really fast. And I got up to the nine position, uh, which was good pay. And there were several levels of nine. But anyway, that, that's my story with the data lines. But it was just three wires, a serial. And, um, you know, you got half duplex, full du duplex. I don't know if you ever worked with hazel team monitors. And uh, depends on the system. You know, you when you when you put when you touch an A on your keyboard or a B or a C or a D, you want that A, B, C or D to show up on the on the screen, and that A showing up on the screen tells tells you that that A or B or C or D went the full length of the wire from the terminal, went through the computer, and it's coming back. It's the echo, and that's I believe full duplex. Some of the stuff I don't really remember a hundred percent. But I remember it was just three wires, and I would say there's three colors, but uh, there's the nitpickers. Oh, white's not a color, and black's not a color. But it was a white wire, black wire, and a ground. And there's more to this story, but I, I don't want to drag it out too much. I wanted to get you to the fact that, you know, if you if you started listening to this thing going, how does the data line go bad? That's what I was, that I was in. When he told me that, the data line has to be replaced every six months because they go bad. You know, like, sign me up. I want to see this, you know. And then when I got saw the terminal, I'm like, there's 30 milli milliamps. Yeah, 30 milliamps of current uh, TTL coming out of there. I might be inverted. I don't, yeah, I think there might have been drivers. What were they, 75, uh, 125s, 75, 150s or something like that coming out of there. Uh, that would be a driver. And uh, the, the TTL going to that driver is inverted. But the whole thing, I got I built these things from scratch. But it was so funny when I showed that guy the tennis. And he got a kick out of that, man. I'm like, you know, after a while, I didn't even stand up there in, in watching the tennis ball come by. I just like, if you overshoot the hole, pull the rope back, and the tennis ball will drop through. And then that asshole, that guy, used to grab his balls and hop up and down when he was nervous. But anyway... Yeah, the big nut came down through, right through his coffee cup. It's Lambert from the uh, Office Space. I always recommend that movie. All right, I think that's it. All right, that's it.